Hey chicken nuggets, welcome back to the channel. We are going to play Find Love or Die Trying Part 4. Let's load. So we're all in the kitchen. Last episode, we had another date with Scarlett and Yui. You've got to be kidding. My goodness, he really said that? Yeah, and he was all like, whoa, what the heck is that? A flash of white raced through the kitchen, sending the girls into a frenzy. What the heck is that? Coming through, sorry. You would practically bulldoze through the other girls in the kitchen. What's going on? I take it back. Bun 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 is a bad boy. He just seems so well behaved. I thought I let him outside again and... Bun 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 effortlessly swerved past Yui under Violet and leapt into Ally. Wah! Bun 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 somehow made his way up to her head and took her cap in his mouth. Hey, give that back! Bun 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 seemed to sneer at Ally, then leapt away and ran off. <laughs> Get back here! Ally started chasing Bun 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 with all she had, but somehow he always stayed one step ahead of her. This looks like a job for me. I'm going to need a Venus flytrap and a few bottles of- No! S stop! Please don't make that. No. Bun 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 leapt onto Scarlet. Ah! Get it off! It is quite humorous that a mere bunny has eluded you all for this long. Think you could catch it? Why, of course. Watch your master at- Bun 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 leapt onto Violet's face. Ah, get this foul creature off of me. Bun 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 sneered with contempt. Someone do something. At that moment, I realized that Tara was recording Violet's struggles. I'm helping in just a second. Bun 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 leapt off of Violet onto the kitchen floor and ran out. Give me my cat back. I do suppose a nice rabbit stew is on for lunch today. Huh. I guess I should help too. You up to help? I don't see why not. Time for round two. Now quick, before he gets too far. I'm right behind you. We spent the rest of the morning trying to catch Bun Bun Bun. Emphasis on trying. That bunny is on something. I'm calling it now. You named him Bun Bun Bun. He pissed. We finally managed to catch him by baiting him with the food Violet reluctantly made, and even then, he didn't make it easy. Let's hope the rest of today is a little more relaxed. Morning, Safiya. Time sure flies, huh? The show's almost over, and you'll be able to go back to your regular life soon. No idea if that's gonna have any less headaches, though. Who knows? As strange as it sounds, I've had some fun here. The whole getting murdered thing isn't great, but it hasn't been all bad. I didn't mention that other people would kill to be in your position. On second thought, they definitely haven't thought it through enough. Probably not. Well, back to business. It's time to pick who you'll go on your first third date with. Who's the unlucky soulmate candidate today? Now we're gonna do Scarlet. Can't say I'm surprised there. You're two birds of a feather. Here's to hoping you both have a day you'll remember. Here's to hoping you both have a day you'll both remember for a change. It's funnier when you're not amnesiac. I found Scarlet in the same place I met her. She was engrossed in a book with a pile of books next to her. They looked worn, as if they'd been read over and over through the years. Hey there, Scarlet. What you reading? Hi, Sophia. Just an old fairy tale. Really? I'm surprised. You read something that would throw science out the window. I'm a woman of varied tastes. I quite like these stories, especially this one. Which one are you reading? It's called The Princess of Avornda. Really? It's silly. I doubt you'd be interested in. Try me. I smiled at her. She smiled back at me in kind. Okay, I don't see why not. Whoa! There's a young girl, Nera, who was the princess of the kingdom of Avornda, which was far, far away from civilization. 
Unlike other princesses before her, she had no time for politicking or parties. She spent all her time building all sorts of gadgets for her family and her friends. Like a robot dog that would eat the vegetables they didn't want to eat. Ooh, I gotta try my hand at this sometime. Scarlet giggled like a child. Nera has a blissfully happy childhood. She even falls in love with a commoner named Oloria. Though her kingdom would never approve of their relationship, Nera and Oloria never failed to see each other in secret every night by the crooked trees in the western forests. But those days don't last. One day, her mother, the queen, is taken by a witch, never to be seen again, and Nera is forced to become queen at the age of 16. In her mother's absence, Nera does her best to lead the kingdom, and for years, it prospers. She's like no other leader they've had before. But secretly, she wants to leave. As queen, she has no more time for the things or people that she loved with all her heart. She cries every night alone. But she knows she can't. Too much responsibility falls on her. Then one day, Nera is cursed by the same witch that took her mother and forgets everything, her name, her family, her kingdom. Everything except for Aloria and the desire to leave. And so she leaves and no one in the village ever sees her again. I won't bore you with the rest of the story, but thanks for listening till now. Oh, come on. Believe me, Scarlet. I want to hear this till the end. Especially because I like you so much. I looked deep in her eyes, and I could tell just how much she loved this story. Well, there's really not much left, but... Well, Nera and Aloria lived a wonderful life in a neighboring kingdom for many years. But one day, she remembers everything and rushes home, worrying for her people. When she gets there, she sees her people have been ruled by the very same witch who took her memory, and that her people no longer prosper the way they did under her rule. In anger, Nera converts the witch on the border of Avorinda. The witch takes off her cowl, revealing herself to be Nera's mother, the lost queen. Nera's mother gives her an ultimatum. She can return to ruling the kingdom, but she can never leave again, or she can leave now and never come back. And that's where the story ends. You never know what choice Nera makes. That's quite a cliffhanger. I want to know what happens next. Believe me, me too. I'm curious, what would you do in their shoes? Dang, that's a hard one, cause it's, well, if her mama there, you transform to a witch and all of this, you could do it. I leave the kingdom and be with the, my love. I think I leave and never come back. Interesting, why is that? There's no point living without love. Even if it was better for the kingdom for Nera to stay, it would guarantee her love could never be realized. And that's just too sad. I think the same way. I've loved this story ever since I lost my memories. I'm sure I don't have a kingdom or anything, but sometimes you wonder, you know? Yeah, I get the same feeling too. That's just life, you know? You just have to keep moving forward. That is the truth. Keep moving forward, y'all. Yeah, you're right. I'm really happy that you're the one I get to move forward with, Safia. Me too, Scarlet. There's no one else I'd rather be with right here, right now. And speaking of right now, there's somewhere I want to bring you. Where's that? I'll give you a hint. I've been thinking about this place ever since you mentioned that you love fairy tales. Pound town! Pound Oh my gosh, there's turtles down here! Turtles! She was practically dancing around the room, taking in all the sights. It was impossible not to smile. I figured the ocean palace just might be your thing. Scarlet practically jumped onto me and squeezed the life out of me in a deathly bear hug. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. You made everything so special in ways I honestly couldn't believe, but you did it. And this is just the beginning, Scarlet. We're in this together. I held Scarlet and kissed her on her lips. Uh. It was like an explosion of passion had set me on fire as she kissed me back and wrapped her arms around me. Always. We spent the rest of the night enjoying a lovely dinner in a place straight out of a fairy tale with nothing but love in our hearts and laughter and smiles on our faces. I can't wait to leave this island with you. I've never been this excited, this happy since ever. 
You make me feel like I'm living in a fairy tale. You know, I've got an idea of how we could spend tonight if you're interested. And what's that? I'll show you why fairy tales were written by adults. Oh, she finna put it on them. After today's date, I decided to take a stroll around the mansion. The night was clear as could be. A light breeze made it just a bit chilly, but not enough that I need to put on more. I found myself fixating on the moon without thinking. I thought I'd find you here. Why is that? Just a gut feeling and the island-wide surveillance system. You doing okay? It's a net! Move. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm just thinking. I can't believe the show's almost over. It didn't feel real earlier today. Time sure flies, doesn't it? You've only got the last third date with Yui tomorrow, then the final ceremony on the day after. Speaking of which, how was your date today? Awesome. It was the best. My connection with Scarlet's one of a kind. There's no one I'd rather be, be, be beside me than her. Being married to her would be like a dream come true. Well, aren't you a romantic? But I'm happy to hear that. If it's you two, I'm sure that's whatever you two face out there. You'll be fine as long as you stick together. And if she stops turning people into zombies. Yeah, that's a conversation we have to have. Don't forget that in the prenup. Girl, she gonna experiment on you, dude. <laughs> Who knew that three dates were all you needed to figure out if a marriage will last? If this TV gig doesn't work out, maybe I should become a marriage counselor. Hmm. Anyway, I love to stay in chat, but I've got some work done. But I've got to get some work done tonight to prep for the ending of the show. You know what? I could use some company. And it's not like you were up to anything. Cat reached her hand out to me. I put my hand in hers on instinct. With her hand in mine, she pulled me with her to the library. Now you're probably wondering, why did I bring you here of all places? You like to read? Well, yes, but no. There's no internet for us goons, so here's where we store most of our information. Rec records of every single run of the show, building and security details, guard schedules, and most importantly, salary records. This song is my least favorite song. It's hidden in plain sight as regular books. You need to know how to decipher them, though. They're pretty useless to the average person. Interesting, and also a little unnecessary. Who here is going to read a book? Oh, I knew the state of education was bad, but not this bad. It still doesn't answer why you brought me here. Well, you see, I have this lovely chair and table here that I do so love to work on. And it's truly, truly exhausting for me to get up from this lovely arrangement to have to fetch each book I need to reference. So, you want me to grab your books for you so you could just stay here? I'm so glad you understand. And you know, I'm doing everything I can to keep you alive, and it's just a teeny tiny favor. Couldn't help but laugh at her mock pout. Sure, cat, it's the least I can do. Great. Alright, to start, I need you to grab me the Princess of Veranda, 100 Easy Recipes for the Philosopher's Stone, and... I regret everything. This must be the 100th batch of books I've had to deliver. It's been hours. Seriously, whoever designed this system should be shot. I tried to read a few of the books I was delivering, but like Kat said, they just seemed like regular books. And that's a wrap. Thanks for the help, Sophia. I'll send you a thank you card for when you're off this island or something. At this rate, that was pretty much slave labor. I like to think of it more of as unpaid charity work. You've got one last date tomorrow. Don't mess it up. I'm curious. What's the first thing you're going to do when you're out of here? Honestly, I'm not sure. Maybe try to figure out what my life was before. Who knows? That's as good as any start. As good a start as any. Well, I gotta get back to editing. Night. See you, cat. Guess I head back to my room and call it a night. The alarms were deafening. We planned for every possibility we could, but it wasn't enough. We made it to the ship, but it still wasn't enough. Our one saving grace, the ship, wouldn't start. Someone tampered with it, and there's no time to fix it. That's, that's it then. I couldn't find the words to say. I love you. I love you too, Safia. I wish we could have met anywhere but here. 
She held me in her arms with the last of her strength. All that's left to do is wait. Goodbye, love. Okay, that was episode four of Find Love or Die Trying. Interesting, interesting. So we got like a little bit of context. His dream sequence, they had got caught. Scarlet gave him that poop. Um, she put it on him. So that was fun. The bun 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 went crazy. If you found this entertaining, please like, comment, subscribe, ringling the bell. Peace.